Tony La Russa. If you know baseball, you know about Tony. A Hall of Fame manager, he's one of the greatest ever to manage. His 2,902 managerial wins rank second all-time in baseball history. He's managed a team in nearly 40 separate seasons, managing the White Sox, Athletics, and Cardinals in his career. He's also led his team to the postseason in 15 seasons, which includes 6 World Series appearances and 3 World Series wins. He was elected into the Hall of Fame in 2014, a rightfully deserving nomination. However, despite being one of the best, La Russa is no stranger to dumb decisions and foolish moments. His career and life are full of them. Not once, but twice in 2022 did La Russa decide to intentionally walk a batter while the pitcher was ahead in the count 1-2. In 2021, La Russa admitted he didn't know about the extra inning ghost runner rule and had his closer Liam Hendricks run instead of a position player. He called Brewers fans idiots after they heckled him during a post-game interview in the mid-2000s, as well as fighting with a reporter. In 1996, he decided to replace Cardinals legend Ozzie Smith with somebody else as the everyday shortstop, despite Ozzie Smith being the clear frontrunner for the position. This decision was not taken lightly with Ozzie Smith or Cardinals personnel everywhere. I didn't even mention the multiple DUIs La Russa received during his life, one of which he tried to get out of it by saying he's a Hall of Fame baseball person. However, there's one notable dumb decision La Russa made that is often forgotten about, one that occurred while he was the manager of the Oakland Athletics. It's perhaps the dumbest decision he's ever made on the baseball field. It's October 11th, 1992, Game 4 of the American League Championship Series. The visiting Toronto Blue Jays are in Oakland to face the Athletics. The Blue Jays are up two games to one in this best of seven series, and they're looking to take a commanding three games to one lead. The Athletics are looking to tie the series and return to the Fall Classic for the fourth time in five seasons. Winner of this series goes to the World Series, loser goes home. If you're a baseball fan, you're probably familiar with this game, but if not, I'll quickly go through it before getting to the Russa decision in question. This game was a wild one. Toronto took an early 1-0 lead thanks to a home run by first baseman John Olrood. Oakland in response exploded for a 5-run third inning off Blue Jays pitcher Jack Morris. 5 hits, 3 walks, and a sacrifice fly suddenly made it 5-1 in favor of Oakland. Starter Bob Welch pitched well for the A's, limiting the Blue Jays' bats all day. Oakland would only add to their lead as the game went on. A home run by Ruben Sierra in the bottom of the 6th made it 6-1 Oakland, which was the score as the game entered the 8th inning. After a leadoff double, Welch was replaced by Jeff Parrott, who allowed two hits in the only two batters he faced before being replaced by that season's MVP, Dennis Eckersley. Eckersley immediately allowed back-to-back -back singles, which suddenly made it a 6-4 ball game. He settled in after that though, and retired the next three hitters to hold the lead. Still 6-4 entering the top of the ninth, Eckersley allowed a leadoff single to Devon White before future Hall of Famer Roberto Alomar came up as a tying run. They're trying to trick it. Hit to right field, Sierra going back, looking up, and this game is tied! Alomar's game-tying home run off Dennis Eckersley is one of the most famous hits in Blue Jays postseason history, and Toronto erased a five-run deficit off the Athletics' bullpen. The Blue Jays would load the bases with two outs, but the Athletics got out of the inning without giving up the lead, 6-6 six six entering the bottom of the ninth. This is where we see the stupidest decision of Tony La Russa's career. Harold Baines lit up the inning with a single and was immediately pinch run for by Eric Fox. After a first pitch swing strike, Fox stole second base, winning run on second with no outs. Let's look at the situation at hand before seeing what happens in this plate appearance. The game is tied with zero outs in the bottom of the ninth with an 0-1 count. The winning run is in scoring position. Seeing how Fox just stole second base, it's clear that he has at least a little bit of speed. All the Athletics need here is a base hit and they'll win the game. You might recognize the man at bat right now, his name is Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire, a man that needs no introduction. He's one of the most famous players in MLB history for one reason or another. I could make an entire video about his involvement in steroids and the impact he had on MLB during the steroid era, but that's a topic for another time. Instead, I need to display just how good of a hitter McGuire was entering this at bat. McGuire was one of the most feared sluggers in baseball at the time. 
In six full seasons through 1992, Maguire had over 3,700 plate appearances in which he slashed 247 with a 356 on base and 503 slugging for an 859 OPS and 141 adjusted OPS. Among all players in MLB with at least 3,000 plate appearances from 1987 to 1992, Maguire is number one in home runs, 13th in OPS, 9th in adjusted OPS, 15th in total bases, and 7th in walks. Only once in a full season did he ever hit fewer than 30 home runs or have an OPS under 800. In 1992 in particular, Maguire led the American League in slugging percentage and adjusted OPS. He slashed 268 with a 385 on base and 585 slugging for 970 OPS. That 970 OPS was the second best of his career and he placed fourth in MVP voting. Again, I mention all of this to show you just how great of a hitter Maguire was entering this at bat. He was no slouch and was undoubtedly a top 10 hitter at the time. So, given that information, what do you think happens in this play appearance? Take a moment and guess. If you guess he gets a hit, you are incorrect. If you guess he recorded an out via a strikeout, ground out, or fly out, you are also incorrect. If you guess he reached base via a walk, hit by a pitch, error, interference, or some other means, you are incorrect. What else is left, you might ask? I'll show you. And McGuire bunting and a great bunt down the first baseline and he'll be tagged out by Ward. Are you kidding me? Mark McGuire with the winning run on second base sacrifice bunts. Credit where it's due, it was the perfect sacrifice, absolutely perfect, but that's all the good I could say. There's so much wrong with this. There is no reason whatsoever a hitter as great as Mark McGuire should have bunted the runner over. There's very, very few reasons why anyone except the pitcher should ever sacrifice. There are exceptions, but this is not one of them. Sacrifices are situational. Sometimes a sacrifice could work out depending on who the current batter is and who is on deck or in the hole. However, it's almost never a good idea to intentionally get out via a sacrifice bunt. The current batter would either have to be really, really bad or the next couple of batters be really, really good. You do not have one of the best hitters in baseball intentionally get out when he has a chance to win the game. This would be the equivalent of having Bryce Harper sacrifice instead of letting him swing the bat. The batter on deck at the time was Terry Steinbach. Steinbach had one of the best seasons of his career in 1992, but still a far cry from McGuire that year. After Steinbach was Carney Lansford, who was at best an average hitter in 1992. A reminder that this is Game 4 of the American League Championship Series, and the Athletics are down two games to one. In case anyone was wondering, McGuire in the playoffs entering this plate appearance was struggling, batting 125 in the first four games so far. However, that extremely small sample size is no excuse. McGuire certainly didn't come up with this stunt alone. It was the idea of La Russa. I wish I could say I'm surprised he did this, but I'm not. Larusa may be one of the greatest managers ever, but he's had his long list of questionable and controversial moves as well. You can disagree with me and think this was not a bad decision, but I believe it's one of the worst decisions I've seen a manager make. The big question remains, does this decision pay off? In the next at bat, with Fox on third and one out, Steinbeck hits a grounder to second base where Roberta Alomar throws the home plate to get Fox out. Toronto got out of the inning without allowing a run, and the Blue Jays would eventually win the game in extra innings and win the series in six games. Perhaps if Tony let McGuire hit, the game and the series would have turned out differently. Following this plate appearance, McGuire had nearly 4,000 more plate appearances in his career and didn't once sacrifice bunt ever again. This right here is the final one of his career, one that'll go down as the dumbest decision in Tony LaRusso's career.